I'm Charles Babb. This is Spirituality and Sports. Welcome, Chad Hennings, today. Why were the 90s Cowboys so successful? I think it was just a confluence of, of individuals that came at the right place at the right time with starting down with a, a new owner that wanted to make his mark in the NFL that was willing to take some pretty significant risks with his own wealth. I mean, he rolled the dice, he was all in. And we had a coach, Jimmy Johnson, who was much the same mentality. That uh, th this was their shot at uh, you know, NFL greatness and immortality when it came to that. And two very and their, strong. Their egos demanded that they yeah. roll the dice. Well, but, and that's it. But that's. The, Not in a the, bad way, but I mean, they're just very strong personalities. But that is, you know, that I think from an entrepreneurial pro, you know, perspective, that's what where great men come. They're willing to take risk, calculated risks, and put them own selves, put themselves in, in um, I don't want to say in harm's way, but put, put themselves out there where they, you know, it's either all in, you know, like the Wildcatters. We're either going to go broke or we're going to make it big. And, and they did that. But they did it from an, with an intelligent way with the draft picks, with the Herschel Walker trade, where the talent, that's what I'm saying, it's a confluence of young talent that came in. And it took a couple years to get to that point, but when able to do it, they, they were consistent with their philosophy on how they wanted to play defense, how they wanted to play offense. They got the personnel. Uh, in on the team to to round that out and made a heck of a run and it was the aspect of the players too buying into that system and you know busting butts in the off season to get better and better and better and three Super Bowls later it's what happens. There's like half a dozen Hall of Famers or, or more that mm -hmm. played on those teams. Why did they not win more Super Bowls? I mean, three's, three's a pretty good number, don't get me wrong. Well, you, that's life. You know, with um, when the transfer of coaches from Jimmy to Barry, it's uh, different nuances in the leadership style. Uh, coulda, woulda, shoulda, made it to the NFC Championship game. We ended up uh, spotting them, fumbling the ball, turnovers in the first quarter, spot them 21 points pretty big deficit to have to overcome, but we came close. But uh, it could have, but it, I, I think it just goes to show how difficult it is, particularly in professional athletics, to continue to stay at the top and repeat year after year after year. Because, you know, in my opinion, when, when everybody on the team is not having the same focus and vision and set of, of core values, per se, that the team, where it's the team first and not the individuals, mm -hmm. that if everybody doesn't have that concept or philosophy, that's when you know, the wheels start to kind of fall off the bus and it becomes individual agendas. And you may win for a period of time, but for longevity, you're not gonna remain consistent. And that's why it's so important to have, you know, particularly reinforce the top, this is who we are, this is our mission, and make sure everybody from top owner, coaches, Veterans, rookies, everybody buys into that concept. Um, because when it becomes at times more about the me, where I'm concerned about my own statistics, I want to get paid, get that next contract, you know, that's really where, from an organizational standpoint, different agendas. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long way back down to the bottom. <laughs> what? Who was the most ridiculous athlete on the team that you played with? I mean, you had quite a few, Michael Irvin and, and uh, you know, I mean, little guy named Emmett Smith, and, and then you had, uh, you know, different players. Who? who? I think the it, phenomenal athletes in the room, I mean, here we're sitting there trying to compare professional athletes, right. guys who have been, you know, top one, two percent of all football players make it to that level. The body right? control on those guys is right. amazing, especially the skill players. You right. just shake your head. But the best athlete, I think, overall natural God-given ability was Deion Sanders. Speed, athleticism, intelligence of the game, just a very fluid individual. And um, he was 
the whole package, a true shutdown corner. Did you see him do something that you still shake your head at? You can still see in your mind, you just go, I just can't believe a human did that. Well, well, you know, some of the interceptions, you know, as a shutdown cover corner, you know, being all over a guy, making a very athletic interception, but then running it back in, you know, putting his hand behind his head, you know, doing yeah. his thing. But every stride was almost five yards in and of itself. Just the speed that he had, it, it was, you kind of just shake your head and go, wow. That, that was impressive. Tackling Barry Sanders, you, you mentioned uh, one time talking about Dennis Bird, his attempt to tackle Barry. Dennis was sharing a story with me one time. Uh, we we're talking about running backs that we played against, and he said, you know, we all both agree that Barry was the best running back ever. And he said how he mistackled him. It was like three times on, on this one single play where he had him in the background. They were on a run blitz. Barry does this patented you know little sidestep Dennis goes down and Dennis has a, a motor that runs pretty hard all the time so he got up hustled to the sideline you know Barry probably ran 40 yards to the sideline he had him on a stop and Barry picks him up out of the corner of his eyes does his patented stop Dennis goes flying by Barry goes runs the opposite side of the field Dennis chases after him and then he finally almost had him dead to rights Barry does his other patented spin around move and Dennis falls flat in his face he said after that time somebody else is going to get him I'll just give up <laughs> Who kept the team loose, the Cowboys? Uh, who, who was the greatest practical joker in the locker room, the guy that, that maybe people don't realize? He, he was an integral part to that success. Oh, there were several. I mean, I, I think of guys like Mark Tuone, Charles Haley, Nate Newton. Well, most of these guys are all offensive linemen. They're the Santa Claus, the, the, the over the heavier set, jovial guys. Uh, but Frank Cornish <laughs> was another one that was just hilarious. And it, and it you're right, you, it was almost comical. Guys would hustle back to the locker room after meetings or whatnot just to see who was gonna pull what pranks on, on who. And um, it, uh, it, it made life interesting. That's, that's what makes being on a team like that fun. That's what makes going out there and playing mm -hmm. fun. A lot of fans don't see that. They see the Pro Bowler, but they don't realize team chemistry, how important that is. Very much so.